The Bible repeatedly warns against engaging in practices like consulting mediums, spiritists, and necromancers. These warnings aren't just ancient commands, but remain relevant and critical for us today. Let's explore why God, in His infinite wisdom, has forbidden such activities and how they can deeply affect our spiritual lives. Leviticus 19.31 states, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. This verse makes it clear that involvement in such practices defiles us. The term defile means to make unclean or impure, to corrupt or to desecrate. When we consult mediums, witches, or sorcerers, we cannot expect the Holy Spirit to dwell within us because we are inviting spirits contrary to God's will into our lives. These actions are not just acts of curiosity or desperation. They are direct disobedience to God's commands, leading us away from His presence. In Deuteronomy 18 verses 10 to 12 we read, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. God describes these actions as abominations because they open doors to darkness and demonic influence. This isn't just a warning for people of ancient times, but a command that transcends the ages. Engaging in these forbidden activities invites evil into our lives, blocking our connection with God and disrupting the peace and protection that comes from walking in obedience to Him. Necromancy, one of the practices explicitly banned in Scripture, involves attempting to communicate with the dead. It's a form of divination that God strongly condemns. Leviticus 26 warns us that turning to mediums and spiritists is akin to prostituting oneself spiritually. It is selling one's allegiance and trust that rightfully belongs to God alone. Necromancy isn't just a harmless pastime or a way to deal with grief. It's a dangerous spiritual practice that separates us from God. The Bible's warnings about necromancy and other forbidden practices are not merely about avoiding specific rituals. They are about guarding our hearts and minds from influences that can corrupt our faith. When we seek guidance from anything other than God, we place our trust in lies and deceptions. Necromancy, mediums, and spiritists promise insights or comfort, but they deliver falsehoods and spiritual bondage. The spirits that respond in these practices are not benevolent or benign. They are demonic entities that seek to deceive and ensnare. Many Christians today might dismiss these warnings, thinking such practices don't really work or are merely superstitions. However, the Bible would not warn against something impossible or without real spiritual danger. The spiritual world is real, with real spirits that can contact humans and influence our lives. When people attempt to contact the dead, they are not communicating with their deceased loved ones, but with demonic spirits posing as them. This deception is profound and dangerous because it can lead people further away from God and deeper into spiritual darkness. In recent years, there's been a growing fascination with the spirit world. Television shows about the paranormal, ghost hunting, and occult practices have become increasingly popular. Hollywood is producing more films centered around these themes, feeding the curiosity and obsession with the supernatural. This fascination is not new. Humanity has always been intrigued by the unknown and the mystical. However, as children of God, we must be discerning. We must understand that these fascinations are not benign entertainment, but can lead us down dangerous paths that are forbidden by God. There's an innate human desire to connect with the unseen, to understand the mysteries of life and death, and to seek control over the future. This desire is not inherently wrong. It reflects a deeper longing for the divine. However, when this longing is not directed towards God, it becomes a vulnerability that the enemy exploits. God's prohibitions against these practices are not arbitrary. They are for our protection. Engaging with the occult, even out of curiosity, is like playing with fire. It can quickly spiral into something far more dangerous than we anticipated. There are countless testimonies of individuals who have opened spiritual doors in their lives that they now struggle to close. God, as a loving father, gives his children guidance to keep them safe. When God says, do not, 
It's because he is trying to shield us from harm. He knows the end from the beginning and he understands the spiritual dynamics that we cannot see. Many people have dabbled in the occult only to find themselves tormented, oppressed, or even possessed by evil spirits. This is not just about curiosity gone wrong, it's about spiritual warfare and the reality that there are forces in this world that seek to destroy us. As we walk through our daily lives, interacting with people at work, in our neighborhoods, or even while running errands, it's easy to make assumptions about those around us. Just as no one can automatically tell that you are a Christian when you walk down the street, we also have no way of knowing the hidden aspects of others' lives. People carry secrets, and some of these secrets involve practices and beliefs that are far from what we might expect. You may be surprised by the number of individuals who are involved in the occult, engaging in activities that are contrary to the will of God, and yet we remain unaware of it. The reality is that involvement in the occult is often hidden, and there are far more people involved in it than we might realize. I have even known of pastors, leaders of large congregations, who were secretly engaged in occult practices. Yes, actual pastors. This underscores an important truth. We don't always know what people do behind closed doors or what they are involved in when they think no one is watching. What appears on the surface can be very different from the hidden spiritual battles and choices people make in private. Those engaged in these practices don't typically wear signs advertising their spiritual alignments. Just like how your faith in Christ isn't visible unless you openly share it, those who consult mediums, practice witchcraft, or engage in other occult activities often keep it concealed. They might be our friends, co-workers, neighbors, or even family members. Their involvement in these forbidden practices can be a deeply kept secret, hidden behind the facades of normalcy. This hidden nature is a stark reminder that we cannot judge a person's spiritual state by their outward appearance. The Bible warns us that there are wolves in sheep's clothing. And while this specifically addresses false prophets, the principle applies broadly. People can outwardly appear upright, friendly, and even religious, while secretly harboring beliefs and practices that are in direct opposition to God's commands. The occult doesn't always look like what Hollywood portrays with dark robes and sinister rituals. It can be subtle, hidden in the shadows of seemingly ordinary lives. You never truly know the secrets your co-workers keep or the full extent of their beliefs just as they don't fully know yours. People hold a wide variety of beliefs, some of which might be surprising. For example, there are groups that believe Lucifer is actually good and that the Bible misunderstood his role. They see Lucifer not as a force of evil, but as someone who is trying to help humanity. This is just one of the many diverse beliefs people may hold, often unknown to those around them. In various occult and esoteric traditions, Lucifer is viewed as a symbol of enlightenment, knowledge, and the quest for personal freedom, diverging significantly from the conventional Christian perspective of Lucifer as a purely evil entity. These traditions often interpret Lucifer's name, which means light bringer or morning star, as emblematic of the pursuit of wisdom and the illumination of hidden truths. Rather than viewing Lucifer as a literal fallen angel who opposes God, these groups see him as a metaphorical figure who challenges ignorance and encourages individuals to seek their own understanding of the world. Lucifer's role as a rebel against tyranny is another common theme in these esoteric beliefs. He is often portrayed as a figure who defies oppressive authority, symbolizing the courage to resist unjust or arbitrary rules. In this light, Lucifer's rebellion against God is interpreted not as an act of evil, but as a principled stand against what is perceived as divine despotism. As Christians, it's important to be aware of this reality. The presence of occult practices in our communities is more common than many of us realize. The allure of secret knowledge, power, or control can lead people down dangerous paths, often without those closest to them even knowing. This is why it's so crucial for us to remain vigilant and discerning. We should pray for spiritual insight and wisdom, not only for our protection, but also to effectively witness to those who may be trapped in these deceptions. In a world where spiritual darkness often hides in plain sight, we must be lights that shine the truth of Christ. 
By being aware of the secrets people keep, we can better understand the spiritual battles that are fought daily and be prepared to share the hope and freedom found only in Jesus. One of the main reasons people turn to spiritists, astrologers, and other forbidden methods is the desire to know the future. Humans have always been anxious about what tomorrow holds, whether it be related to personal decisions, financial security, relationships, or the broader state of the world. This desire for knowledge is not wrong in itself, however, it becomes dangerous when we seek answers outside of God's provision. Only God knows the future. Satan does not have this knowledge, and while he might attempt to influence or create our future, he is not omniscient. Satan and his demons do not possess the all-knowing power that belongs exclusively to God. They can observe and influence, but cannot predict or determine the future. This limitation is critical for us to understand because it underscores the futility of seeking guidance from anything other than God. Consulting with a medium or engaging in necromancy is akin to looking into a broken mirror. You might see something, but it's distorted and false. The guidance you receive will be rooted in lies, and the consequences of following those lies can be devastating. When people turn to these practices, they often do so out of fear or desperation. They may feel lost, confused, or overwhelmed by life's challenges. However, turning to the occult is not the answer. It does not provide the security, clarity, or peace that people are seeking. Instead, it leads to further confusion, fear, and spiritual bondage. God wants us to come to Him with our fears and uncertainties. He invites us to lay our burdens at His feet, to trust in His timing, and to seek His will for our lives. Ephesians 4.27 warns, Neither give place to the devil. All Satan needs is an opportunity, a small crack to enter into our lives. When we engage in consulting mediums, spiritists, or necromancers, we give him that opportunity. Even seemingly innocent actions can have profound consequences. I have witnessed individuals who have turned to these forbidden methods for various reasons, like seeking wealth or love, only to find themselves paying a price far greater than they ever imagined. The price might be their peace, their mental stability, their relationships, or even their eternal soul. The Bible is our ultimate source of guidance. When you are confused, afraid, or uncertain about the future, turn to the Word of God. The Bible is not just a collection of ancient writings. It is the living Word of God, active and powerful, capable of speaking directly into our situations. It contains the wisdom of God, the comfort of His promises, and the direction we need for every aspect of life. The more we immerse ourselves in Scripture, the less susceptible we will be to the lies and deceptions of the enemy. If you find yourself tempted to seek answers outside of God's will, remember that Jesus is the only way. We cannot find peace, safety, or truth in forbidden methods. These practices will only lead us further into darkness. God's love and protection are sufficient. When we dwell in Christ, we are under His care and guidance. There is no safer place to be than in the will of God. No fortune teller or medium can offer the security and peace that comes from a relationship with Christ. We live in a world filled with uncertainty. From global events that shake economies and nations to personal trials that test our faith, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. In these moments, the temptation to seek quick answers or assurances from sources outside of God can be strong. But we must resist. God is not only the creator of the universe, but also the sustainer of our lives. He is intimately involved in every detail, and nothing happens outside of His knowledge and control. When we turn to Him, we find not only the answers we seek, but also the peace that surpasses all understanding. Consulting spiritists, sorcerers, or astrologers is not only dangerous for your spiritual well-being, but also carries eternal consequences. These practices will not lead to heaven, but to hellfire. We cannot expect to engage with the demonic and still enter the kingdom of God. God is holy and nothing unclean can stand in His presence. When we understand the gravity of what's at stake, the allure of these forbidden practices diminishes. God takes this seriously. It's not something that you can just walk in and walk out of as you please. This is not a game to God. The spiritual realm operates under principles established by God, and violating those principles has consequences. 
Those who persist in consulting spiritists and engaging in the occult are placing themselves in direct opposition to God's commands. It's not about making a mistake or having a moment of weakness. It's about deliberately choosing a path that leads away from God's grace and into spiritual peril. God is not trying to restrict us unnecessarily. His commands are not burdensome, they are protective. He understands the reality of spiritual forces better than we do and he knows the harm they can cause. His warnings are acts of love designed to keep us safe from influences that seek to destroy us. God desires that none should perish but that all should come to repentance and live in the freedom and joy that he offers through Christ. Jeremiah 32:27 assures us, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? God is more than capable of protecting us, guiding us, and providing for our needs. We do not need to seek forbidden methods for comfort, answers, or security. When we trust in God, He takes care of everything. He invites us to call upon Him, promising to show us great and mighty things which we do not know. God's invitation is clear. Come to Him. Trust in Him. Lean on Him. He is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We don't need the false assurances of the occult. We have a living God who loves us, who has proven his love through the sacrifice of his Son, and who promises to be with us always. Whatever we face, we do not face it alone. God is with us, and his presence is our greatest assurance and strength. Saul's downfall serves as a stark warning for us. His decision to consult a medium instead of seeking God's counsel led to his destruction. We, too, must be careful to follow the path of righteousness and not be swayed by curiosity or fear. The world offers many false solutions, but there is only one true way, and that is through Christ. Jesus calls us to follow him. We are called to serve God faithfully, to trust in his guidance, and to reject any practice that pulls us away from his truth. The path of righteousness is not always easy, and it often requires us to make difficult choices. But those choices are worth it because they lead to life, peace, and a closer relationship with God. Let us remain steadfast in our commitment to God, rejecting all forms of forbidden spiritual practices. We are his children, and he is our Father, guiding us, protecting us, and providing for us. May we never stray from his path, but always seek his will above all else. In a world filled with uncertainty and spiritual confusion, Let's be people who stand firm in the truth of God's word.